tell me why you're doing this. You first. <laughs> uh, we're paddling around the lake, um, something we've always wanted to do, but uh, in the planning stages it kind of seemed a little, not like self-centered, but we could also use this journey to bridge and to a greater audience and increase awareness about Lake Superior, um, you know, water rights, uh, invasive species, and just like get a little more conscientious about the environment. And we thought uh, using, you know, outlets such as like the internet, using a web log would be a great way to do that. So combine kayaking and a little bit of education along the way. Um, I, would, <laughs> I would definitely agree with all that. Um, Lake Superior for me it just holds this definitely sp like special place in my heart. Whenever I um, am away from the lake, I can definitely feel that absence. And so I've, I've tried to escape <laughs> um, and go to other places of the country, but I always feel this pull back. And so um, that's, that's another big reason why I feel that, that we both, both are doing this as well. So tell me what you want people to know about the lake. A fact of the lake is that it is the largest freshwater lake in the world and does hold 10% of the world's freshwater. And so um, we just want to preserve that and we want to make sure that it's there for future generations. Um, water is a huge, huge um, part of our, our lives and our basic needs. And as long as we can preserve it and, and keep it, then uh, that's something that we want to encourage folks to, to keep in mind. And, you know, along dovetailing off that, along with the, the conservation aspect, is just people can appreciate uh, the recreation that Lake Superior has to offer. It's not just another, you know, lake. You know, it is, it's a big force of, of nature, I mean, inland sea, as it were, and creates its own weather at times and just have that, you know, respect and appreciation kind of combined into one. But folks, uh, it's cool hearing from people, emails from, you know, Arizona or you know, lower Wisconsin folks that have never been to Lake Superior being like, wow, that's amazing that that resource is there to enjoy and kind of promote that enjoyment and conservation instead of like, we want to pipe it away down to dark, dry up. areas, you know. <laughs> what has surprised you most about how people trade, treat the lake when you've been on your trip? I mean, has, have you seen people not doing stuff right? Or? A little bit of both, I would say. We definitely see people that are out there and they're appreciating it. Um, and then we see people that we're not even sure that they think about their actions at times, you know, and they um, they just might not realize the implications of some of the things that they do. What's the best thing you've had happen since you've been out? Most exciting, most interesting, unusual? It's uh, a tough, like, water-wise, we've had, we've been pretty lucky with um, the days that we have had on the water. We've had, like, four or so weather days at this point we're like three weeks into the journey um, which is to be expected because I mean, it's summer and things get all riled up but I think uh, on the water there's just been some really great days where we've been able to cover miles and just see a very dynamic um, shoreline area that we're not used to like in the Apostle Islands so really great paddling experiences um, especially here in the UP and then just the, the hospitality and generosity of a lot of the people are, yeah, around there, which um, I grew up in in a city. Sometimes that was present, sometimes not so much. Like people kind of just like get in the zone and it's just like the, I have to like do things for me, keep myself um, entertained and sustained. And like on, on our journey, it's been like, you know, people reaching out, people like yourself, Greg, saying like, hey, if you need anything, here's some people to call. Um, the, the paddling community has been pretty awesome around like if we need help we've had some local paddlers in Marquette here just like really you know take us under their wing give us some supplies for repairs and keep us going. Tell me about who in Marquette helped you out uh, and why. Um, Mr. Sam Crowley and uh, Jeff Dasser I believe from Downwind Sports. Sam is a um, longtime paddler he paddled around Ireland last summer in 2007 and he knows what it's like being out on uh, big expeditions and like the things that go wrong and the ailments that your boats can uh, a, a, a cure um, so he's just like I know what you're going through here's some resources you know and um, his friend Nancy uh, and I think they're sea kayak specialists is their business mm -hmm. um, that just like gave us full reign of you know a little shop to work in and supplies to use and take and then Jeff um, just been really going on a whim to help me out. I've had some boat problems um, to make sure I had a solid vessel to use uh, to continue the journey around the lake. Docker, so it kind of looks more banana-like and really needs a skeg or like a keel. And um, 
there was kind of a defect in the factory that's been causing it not to work so well. So I was taking in, in rougher seas because I was sitting pretty low in the water. I take on water like in my day hatch and stuff. How much do you, gear do you carry with you? Well, all the gear that we would need for the two months. So all of our clothes and our camping equipment, um, food, um, all of that. The, the food itself, we only carry about seven to ten days worth at a time. Um, as far as like the bulk of our meals, we do have stuff that we that carry that we carry with us all the time: spices, drink mixes, things like that. Um, that will always be with us. And then our other food we we supply every seven to ten days. Tell me about your mileage thing. Um, our mileage seems to be like one of those graphs that goes like up, down, up, huge flat line down. Uh, it depends on, on the weather. We've had big days that have been up to like 40 miles and then we've had smaller days that have been like 11 miles and three of those were like back from where we came from uh, to get to a camp spot. So but generally I think our the average if you put them all together it would probably be around 20 to 25 miles a day. Uh, we the way we plan the itinerary out is like four days of travel and five days time to try to give us a little buffer that we can you know stretch out if we need to um, and then like once we kind of get into the swing of stuff like when we were cruising on in uh, to Marquette we had been having good weather and kind of getting into the routine and it's just like you get up you eat breakfast you paddle you take a little break you snack paddle lunch paddle some more dinner um, and then you're like whoa we covered 24 miles you know and you're not like ah oh, I didn't really feel like I was struggling too bad you know, the beginning of the trip is just like, wow, these boats are really heavy. Because when you're sea kayak guiding, a lot of time we're doing day trips or we're doing like five day trips. So, you know, your your boat's heavy, but not like when you're like, oh, this is this little self-contained, you know, capsule of fiberglass and well design uh, has to have all of our stuff and food for a few. Well, the food for a week, but the gear for two months. What's the worst thing that has happened so far? <laughs> Our answers would probably be different. <laughs> Mine um, is probably a paddling experience that we had <laughs> coming out of the, the Portage Canal. We ended up having to cut through the Portage Canal because of some pretty bad weather up and around the Keweenaw, calling for like 50 to 70 mile per hour winds and just things that we would never want to go out in. Um, but we're coming out of the Portage Canal and there's this big break wall. Um, and then a beach on the far side, on the left side, and so we were trying to get to that beach because we were told we could camp there and it was beautiful. And, but coming out of this canal, the wind's coming right at us, and I don't even know what the mile, mile per hour was, but felt <laughs> felt really strong. And then the rebound waves from the, the breakwater. I was I was a little little afraid. Um, at one point, I said, Brian, I don't know if I can do this. And there's tons of people watching us and trying to get us to wave but I can't take my hands off my paddle and I can't you know look away from the waves for even a second because I was afraid I was going to go in. That was probably the closest I felt to being out of my comfort zone. <laughs> um, for me I think like the kicker uh, was I had um, kinked my skeg cable on the other boat uh, that I was using and that just like because of the boat's rocker profile, like it, it needs a skeg to help it track straight, and like that to me was like the signification of like, oh no, like now I've got to be like really um, conservative with like what I'm doing, and then we had to like make a little rope on the bottom of it, you know, so Melissa could pull it down like every time you got out on the water, and it was just like one of those things where I just kind of felt like, oh, I don't have the right tools to try to make this work right, so it just kind of like, uh, um, in retrospect, kind of let me learn to kind of just let go of those things and just be like one uh, with the journey and like try to like keep that antsiness at bay because you know we're we do have a, a schedule but we don't necessarily have to like you know push ourselves. There's not days where it's like we have to get to this point unless we're absolutely out of food and our food drop you know is right up or right up the way. But just having learning how to live with that flexibility and you know kind of like get away from like the scheduled you know lifestyle. So I think that negative experience like learned from it became positive. The people who might see on your blog tell us who you guys are. We are a couple <laughs> um, and we actually we met in the uh, the islands guiding. I work for the Apostle, the Apostle Islands. Um, I work for Living Adventures in um, Bayfield, Redcliffe, Wisconsin and Alyssa works for the uh, competition. 
um, trek and trail. And I'll let Alyssa tell a story because she seems to do it a lot better than I do. <laughs> uh, we actually met on um, trips. He was on a trip with Living Adventure and he was doing a checkout trip um, so that he'd be able to lead trips in the future on his own. And um, I was out there uh, with a group of my own on the same island and we were camped next to one another. And I had an assistant with me because it was a large group and my assistant apparently learned how to kayak from Brian here. And so when he saw Brian, he got really excited. He was like, oh goodness, you have to meet this guy. And I was like, oh, just another kayak guide or whatever. And <laughs> but I did, I met him and um, was swept away by his charm. <laughs> no, but, uh, well, yes. <laughs> But it pretty much, we realized that we lived close to one another and just started hanging out and that was about two years ago. 